to establish a company and to do it well, the first thing you need to do is to make a good product. Hey there, I thought I would uh, go ahead and give my initial thoughts as to the uh, first episode of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus now that it's out and available. I guess this will be like the non-spoiler review. I, I can do a full breakdown later. I took stupid notes <laughs> all the way through because it was just crazy. Um, the amount of stuff that they packed into, I think it was like 45 minutes roughly. Um, so for my initial thoughts, it was really, really exciting. Um, I think that there were times when I kind of doubted the quality and stuff, um, but it was always just very interesting um, the whole way through. I think that while they were, um, like, while they were maybe using a few too many callbacks and Easter eggs and stuff to the older movies. Um, I don't feel like anybody's going to complain about it being like a shot for shot remake of anything or anything like that. I think that the Easter eggs were used often enough to keep people excited, but also sparingly enough to where it didn't just feel like it was completely just trying to cash in on things, even though I guess they're already cashing in since it's a subscription service, but that's not the point. Um, so far, the story is seemingly minimalistic, um, but the ending makes it all crazy, <laughs> and like it could go basically anywhere from here. Um, I think that the, there's really like only two like, there's a lot of minor, you know, characters and stuff throughout the episode because it's, like, an introductory episode with not a lot of backstory. I mean, it's kind of vague on that because he's just a bounty hunter, basically. Um, but the characters that were there seemed interesting enough, and the um, situations were intense. Like, as far as... It seemed like... I guess what I'm trying to say is there was never a moment where it felt dull. It didn't feel like it was dragging ever. Even the just purely like dialogue scenes felt like they all had a point and were driving the narrative forward. Um, the first 10 minutes are just nuts. I mean, it's like boom, 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 just constantly things happening. Um, and it just kind of is a bit much to start the show out with, but I think that they have to get people interested right out the gate. Um, so it, it kind of makes sense. I do like that there were not just like creature Easter eggs and things like that, but there was like a lot of tech, like technological um, and effects work that was done to really kind of represent the original trilogy in a new way. Um, I mean, obviously, the whole thing kind of felt Rogue One-ish because it's a modern story based on, you know, back in the day. But I think that they did it in such a way to where it felt very, like, unique. Like, it doesn't feel like it's truly related to the other movies. It feels like the first truly its own story thing in the entire universe of Star Wars, which is kind of cool, as far as, like, movies or shows or film or whatever. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe there will be crossover with famous characters down the road. Right now, it's still pretty unique and on its own. Um, although there's, like I said, crazy stuff that happens that will blow your mind as you watch the episode. But for the time being... It feels very self-contained, which is really cool, um, because, you know, we've seen these species and characters and soldier types and things like that um, for, for years and years and years and decades and decades, but it's, like, always been tied to the Skywalkers or tied to some character, like... 
I haven't watched Rebels, but I know for a fact, I think that from what I've seen in pictures, it seems like it still kind of ties into like Clone Wars and, you know, main saga characters. So this being something that's on its own is just different and really cool. Um, I think that the acting, while very kind of muted or subdued for a lot of the episode, was very good. I think that was actually a good choice to make it very minimalistic because of it being a bounty hunter. I mean, we saw, you know, how Boba Fett acted in the original trilogy and Django briefly in the prequel trilogy. So it makes sense that they would, like, not talk as much. They would do more actively than speaking. Um... But when uh, Pascal was talking, it was very, like, chilling, I guess. Like, it, it, and then eventually kind of funny as you kind of start to understand his character's personality just a little bit more later on in the episode. But in the beginning, it's, like, gruff and intense and really kind of cool. Um, but I kind of like that it opened up more as it went on. Because um, it kind of humanized it, even though... I mean, I guess Mandalorians are human... Or humanoid but I don't know that's not the point I think that the music was pretty cool it, and just the overall vibe was really cool it was very like how they always talk about how Star Wars like is blending all these genres together well this was like very like <laughs> it's gonna sound stupid because it's a lot of what the original trilogy was described as but it's like more so it's um very like Western meets almost like a medieval fantasy at times because you see like some blacksmithing scenes and stuff and that's kind of cool you know but in space obviously because it's star wars but i think it's really cool to see a true blending of the genres because i feel like while star wars did a lot of things before this it was always kind of all over the place to the point of it still just somehow being sci-fi with a lot of elements to it whereas this feels truly like kind of like a western but in a sci-fi setting but with like elements of other stuff going that way like i guess the best way i can think of it is how we've seen all these superhero movies and stuff for years and years and years but i was really excited to see the trailer for new mutants and stuff and see how horror based it was gonna be and how like hearing that the new doctor strange is gonna be the same way kind of like very horror movie with superhero characters and elements like i like to see stuff like that more often where it takes a known story and characters and puts them in a different genre to where we have to like relearn how we look at them and stuff so it's really cool seeing the star wars universe but having it be very gunslinger westerny kind of with more gruffness to it and grit to it we saw some of that in Rogue One, I think, but it, it's definitely more... Uh, but that's more like a war kind of movie in a way, whereas this is more like, um, like I said, a Western and individual like focus. Like, I guess what I'm saying is the thing I think of just in how the character carries himself and stuff like that, it seems very like clint eastwood but with more humor like there's a toughness to it that you just don't see in a lot of the other star wars movies because they're made to be family movies like even han solo at his coolest you know sometimes was just more oh look at me i'm cool whereas this guy just exudes like a cool calmness except for when he doesn't and it's kind of funny i don't know maybe it's similar but i just feel like the genre is more specific and further outside the scope of what star wars has been but in a good way i'm really excited to see more i think it's releasing on like a weekly schedule which is different but it, i mean I, I'm, it's probably a good thing wu-tang was the same way and i liked it because i felt like i had something to look forward to every week even though it made it feel like it was taking longer to get there um so i really look forward to more episodes especially with how the end of the episode kind of turned out and had like this big twist kind of thing that I can't really talk about it but I feel like it shakes up the whole lore of Star Wars and like flips it on its head a bit because we see something that up to this point 
from what I can remember, I've only seen three other times, I think. Well, in three other ways, I should say. Um, in any of the universe of it. I'm sure it's been in more games and stuff that I haven't played. But in the games I've played, the movies I've seen, the comics I've read, the shows I've watched, I've only ever seen three of this thing <laughs> in existence. So it's really cool to see that there's more of that out there. And because it might mean something different for going forward with Star Wars after Episode Nine, possibly. Even though this is set between Episode Six and Seven, it's uh, set five years after Return of the Jedi. So if you kind of think of it in terms of that, the slightly more modern but mostly retro aesthetics of it really work well for it. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10 for me as far as the um, initial episode on my rating system which is very arbitrary and based on like you know it's subjective and what I'm thinking. I'm sure other people feel differently. I really liked it and I'm looking forward to more of it. And hopefully I'll be back in a week for episode two. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.